Ave Maria, this is Friar Roderick here for AirMaria.com. We're in Stores, Connecticut, at the University of Connecticut, at the Student Union Hall in their theater. We have here Norma McCorvey, and she is uh, well known for being the row in Roe vs. Wade. So how are you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Father. How are you? Doing very good. It's, um, and it's very good being here with you, and um, I must say it's, um, y- you have a way of relaxing people. Oh, well, thank you. Thank. You. It's my southern charm. Yes, I think it is. <laughs> Great. Very charming. And so you're doing now a whole series of talks, and you're basing it on, on your experience as being the uh, poster child, basically, of the abortion movement, where you were the, um, the, uh, the, the, the plaintiff in that Roe versus Wade case that, that caused the whole situation. And now you've converted to the... Um, the pro-life cause, and even to the Catholic Church, and so now you're you're traveling uh, around the world, the country, doing talking about that, right? Well, you know, I, I haven't been traveling around the country uh, so much. Um, my lectures have kind of depleted in the last, you know, year or so. But um, whenever I get the opportunity, I, I do go and I do tell the truth about what happened in the abortion clinic and my personal experience in there. Okay. So you had. Um, a lot of experiences that were not so pleasant, too, right, in the uh, abortion clinics. Absolutely. Um, there towards the end of my, uh, the days of my, um, in the abortion industry, I, I was very, um, I was getting very sad. Okay. Because I, I knew the truth about abortion, and um, the abortionist uh, was very greedy and very mean. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I I try to um, project that whenever I'm speaking. Okay. I I don't know if I made any kind of a dent here tonight, but then you never know when you plant a seed if it's going to grow or not. Right. And and you were saying that that, are you saying that that's a uh, a common thing, though, amongst abortionists, too? Yes. Yes, it's a very common thing. Most abortion, the abortionists that I worked for were very mean um, and greedy little men. And they didn't want to share the money with anyone. Yeah. They didn't pay you very much, I heard, during the, during the talk. Yeah. No, no. We only made $6 an hour. Uh, you know, we did, we did everything except the, the actual abortion itself. And you were involved in the actual case for the, um, um, the Roe versus Wade, and you were uh, not really that involved in it, as, as it turns out. You are pretty much used by the lawyers in the case. Yes, um... I, I didn't have to attend any of the court hearings. I didn't have to testify before any kind of juries. Um, all I did was sign on the dotted line, so to speak, and that's how I became Jane Roe. And you didn't know that that was going to really happen, too. That was a very uh, big surprise to you that it turned out the way it was. Absolutely. Um, as I was saying uh, when I was speaking a while ago, um, they told me that they wanted to overturn the Texas statute on abortion, being, leaving me with the impression that they wanted to just legalize abortion in the state of Texas. Okay. And so they turned it into a, a huge inter- uh, national, even international case. They did. Um, but then, you know, there was Roe versus Wade and then Doe versus Bolton that was both handed down on the same day. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, that's what's brought the Holocaust, you know, into the United States. Of course, now it's Abortion's been legal in uh, London, I think, ever since 1967. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I believe so. I believe so. You might want to check that out, though. Um, so, yeah. But at one point, you ended up understanding that life is important, and, what, and that's your main message you want to get out, right? Absolutely. You know, that life is very important. Uh, we, I was even asked a question this evening, um, if a woman was raped you know right i heard that should she be able to care you know and i said absolutely it's very it's a very small percentage of a woman being impregnated through a rape excuse me but um when the woman is you know does is left with a child then she should give that child that respect in that life because that child is a child and and that had nothing to do with um the situation no it doesn't uh, and a lot of people don't seem to understand that for some reason. You know, I guess because 
I guess most rapes, from what I understand, are very violent. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a child, you know. Doesn't matter right. how it got there. And would you say that there's um, any help for people who are in trouble in any way, as far whether um, you know unwed mothers or anyone in distress um, uh, in a financial way? Is there help for people like that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's crisis pregnancy centers, women resource centers, uh, all over the America, all over America, and um, they they have parenting classes. They can teach the mom how to be a mom, oh, and take care of the baby. Wow. Um, they they teach them scriptures, and you know it's it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun and a lot of love, apparently. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of love. That's- that's great. And you say that's on the increase, these number, these um, oh, uh, clinics? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there, I read not so long ago, um, I think from the Houston pro-lifers, that um, crisis, pregnancy number, uh, crisis pregnancy center numbers are rising and the actual abortion clinics are declining. Well, that's great. That's yeah, great. Cause, so. so I've always gotten a, a great impression from those clinics that they're doing a wonderful job, much more about pro-choice than the, the clinics are all about. Oh, absolutely. You know, we have, you know, loving, caring, you know, nurturing women and men there who are there for just that their sole purpose, and that's to help them. And it's absolutely free. Wow. Absolutely free. Well, that's great. That's, that's, that's real choice there. And would you say there's um, help for those who have had abortion and are looking for, say, counseling to get over the hurt involved in that? Absolutely. Uh, I belong, I, I am the co, one of the co-founders of what they called Operation Outcry. Um, and, you know, we have a, a 24-hour 1-800 number that they can call if they, if they need to talk to someone. Uh, there, there's places where they can go and, and, and talk to someone face-to-face. You know, and it's just a wonderful group of women. I, I know just about all the state leaders now, Great. and um, I really enjoy working with them. Great. So it really is family, huh? Yeah. It is. It's, it's just like a family. Great. You're right. Great. Now, what would you say would be the most important thing you want to say to the world in regard to what you experienced um, as far as um, what you saw in the abortion industry and what you saw in the pro-life world and what you've gotten out of all that your Christian and pro-life experience? Wow, that's a three-parter. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, repeat the first one first. Just what's the most important message you want to get out of the... Um, well, the important message is, is that if you have had an abortion in the past, there is help out there for you. You know, and it's free of charge, you know. And then, you know, what I saw in the abortion industry, I hope is never repeated again. And then thirdly, um, what was the third one? Well, just... Um, what your experience with um, the, the Christian uh, side things? Oh, you know, I've I've never had, I've only really had one negative experience with the Christian right, uh, and but that was so long ago and so silly now when I thought stop and think about it, yeah. you know, because it was just a total misunderstanding. Right, right, that, that does happen. So, but you're saying that your experience with Christianity has been very positive and has, oh, and has given yeah. You know, Absolutely. Uh, like I was telling some folks that were sitting over here a while ago, I, I'm taking church history, and I'm, I'm just now getting into uh, Constantine in the 4th <laughs> century. You know, so I still have a ways to go now. It's a lot of history. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. a lot of history. And I'm, I'm very slow at some things, you know, but then I, I'll eventually get it. Right. Well, yeah. good. I hope you do, and um, I'm sure you will. And um, we just want to really thank you, Norma, for, for giving us this interview and, and coming here and speaking about all your experiences. It's been very informative. I, pre- I appreciate that very much. And I, I, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son. And I can't bless you, but right, right. I bless your ministry that you're doing here. And I hope that you have many, many other encounters. Thank you very much, Norma. We appreciate the, um, the uh, encouragement there. God bless you. Thank you.